coming at you with yet another video on how to change your transmission fluid. The specific vehicle we will be working on today is a 2014 Nissan Altima S. This vehicle has a CVT transmission fluid. It is the second generation of CVT transmissions. If you have the first generation transmission, which is a CVT, you'll use NS2. My specific vehicle has a second generation, which uses the NS3 transmission fluid. Disclaimer, I am not a certified mechanic. I have done my own research, which allows me to change my transmission fluid in confidence. And I suggest that you do the same. Do your research, know what kind of fluid that your vehicle takes. Give yourself knowledge so that you can gain confidence when you're doing your own maintenance. The kind of maintenance that I'm doing, anybody can do. With a few very simple tools, you can be on your way to being your backyard mechanic. I have been doing my own vehicle maintenance for years and I have done so under the stewardship of another mechanic. Therefore, I do my own maintenance in confidence. If there's something I don't know, I simply go online and research it, as again, you should as well. A couple of things we'll be going over today are the four most asked questions on the channel. One of being the copper ring, two, what fluid do I use, three, transmission fluid, and four, dipstick. There is no dipstick on this vehicle, and that's because the Nissan dealers do not want you messing with your own vehicle. They want to do the work for you. I actually did a call and found out they wanted to charge me about $400 to do an oil change. No wonder. If you can change this transmission fluid yourself, you can be out with only having spent about $30 to $50 on oil. If you don't have any tools, you can buy yourself a very inexpensive kit at Harbor Freight, as I have bought most of my tools. I'll be showing you in order how to go about changing your transmission fluid, even the kind of tools that I use, so that it's as simple as possible. If you guys have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best with the research that I have done to answer your questions. But please don't be afraid to ask your local mechanic or dealer about these kinds of questions. Mental note, your dealers will likely give you information that can be inaccurate at times, such as the lifespan of your oil. No oil can last much longer than 30,000 miles, if we're speaking about CVT transmission fluid. So with all that being said, let's get this video underway. Now, like I've mentioned in previous videos, it's a really good habit to take your car for a drive and get it warmed up before you drain the oil. This will also help with the uh, draining as it's not going to be thick and it will be nice and thinned out. It will be much more thorough of a job. Now first off, you're going to want something to drain the oil into. I just happen to have one of these uh, handy uh, oil pans, drainage pans, uh, somebody gave to me. But before I did uh, use something like this, I simply used uh, whatever I had around, whether it was a one gallon jug that I had chopped in half. Uh, you're only draining about three and a half quarts out. So just grab yourself anything that you can uh, drain oil into and contain so that you can uh, get rid of it uh, in a proper manner later. Secondly, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter and a 19 millimeter in order to get the, both the check plug off and the drain plug off. Once you get your vehicle up on stands, you're gonna wanna jack up the rear to make sure that the whole vehicle is as level as possible. This will give you accurate readings when it comes time to pulling the check valve or if you have a dipstick, if you purchase a dipstick, as these transmissions do not come with one, you can uh, have accurate readings because the whole vehicle is level. So you're first going to be using your 19 millimeter socket. So first inspection, I'm looking at the color. The color is supposed to be green, and it does actually still have a gr very decent green hue to it. It's not like it's black or a dark brown or anything like that. The temperature is nice and warm. 
not quite hot. I took this out for maybe a five minute drive, but the point is just getting this nice and warm. So I thought I mentioned something that I get asked uh, quite often. It's one of the four most asked questions on my channel. And that is this copper ring. I'm always asked whether or not you should change it. And honestly, I've never changed these copper rings. I've never had any issues with not changing them. Um, would I suggest it? And I've had several vehicles that have had these copper rings. I mean, they didn't have them in the old days. I can't imagine why you would really need anything like that now unless it was damaged. If it's damaged and it's actually leaking, well, yeah, I would change it. But uh, this doesn't have any sort of damage on it. So I would just probably wipe this off with a rag and leave it. All right, so this appears to be all set as far as draining goes. So simply replace the plug. And tightening it. I honestly don't even use a torque spec. I just get it snug. That's all it needs. You're just looking for no leaking. If you don't get it tight enough, obviously it's gonna leak. So just hand tighten it, make it sure it's nice and snug, and leave it. It's all set. So the next thing is oil. Now I'm gonna put four quarts into it. Even though I only drained about three and a half, I'm gonna overfill it just a smidge so that when I pull the check bolt, there will definitely be some kind of oil coming out. Now, if you didn't put enough in there, there likely won't be any oil coming out of that check bolt. But we'll cover that once we get to it. So you wanna clean all your utensils off as much as possible. I'm using just this brake cleaner. You'll notice that I have um, made my own dipstick. Um, would I suggest that now? If it's the only thing that you can come up with, sure, why not? But uh, honestly, I just don't use this anymore because uh, I've done this enough times and with the check bolt underneath of the vehicle, that tells you uh, without the use of a, of a dipstick, uh, whereabouts you are with oil. But if you want a second way to check the, how much oil you have in there, uh, purchasing a dipstick on Amazon is an excellent, excellent way uh, to accomplish that. So once again, I'm using CVT transmission fluid from Valvoline. I chose this because it was an excellent price. And uh, man, I, I bought this several years ago now I'm gonna say about three years ago now so I can't even remember the price besides that prices may have uh, changed by now but I do remember the court uh, value for the uh, Nissan CVT transmission fluid was about $28 per quart again that may have changed since three years ago I bought an entire box of this stuff I actually bought two boxes because I originally planned on doing a transmission flush, but I could not find enough um, people online that were doing the transmission flushes and having success with it as far as not damaging their transmissions. So thus, I decided to do every 15,000 miles with my transmission and as of late, um, only doing about, uh, see this most recent one would have been 24,000 miles that this particular oil change uh, has been used for. So beyond this point, um, will I continue to use Valvoline? Um, for myself, I'm a really big fan of AMS oil. So if uh, once I use up all of my Valvoline oil, I will likely switch to AMS oil simply because uh, the kind of data that they can provide with the test results on how well it works, um, it lasts longer so um, me personally I'll probably go with AMS oil but this is still I would recommend this to anybody um, I've never had an issue with this you do what you want but I would still recommend CVT uh, transmission fluid from valve oil.
Now for the sake of the viewers, I've decided not to put a full four quarts in because I started thinking, what if I put in just three and a half? Because this one was about half empty. So let's time underneath and see if anything comes out of the check valve with just three and a half quarts. But first, before we get under there, we're gonna warm the oil that's already in there. So let's start the car. Now for kicks, I decided, you know, why not use the, the homemade uh, dipstick that I made. Right now I'm only seeing, I'm only seeing oil on the very tip of this thing. But it's supposed to be all the way up to here, this little groove that I made. But anyway, we'll get under there a little bit later and we'll do the check hold. Alright, so I've got my heat gun here and what I have done in the past, and I'll climb up underneath after this has been running for, you know, 15 minutes or so, just sitting here idling. I'll take this and I'll shine it right on the oil pan and it'll give me a general idea of how hot it is. Now, the inside of your transmission is typically going to be about uh about 15 degrees hotter than what the pan is going to be because it will have cooled off by going through say your radiator or something like that whatever's cooling it down and had been cooled off and it'll send it back into the oil pan to get re-picked up again by the oil pump so this will be you know generally fairly accurate unless you're able to get down um, into your uh, fill tube and fish something like a uh, like a thermometer or something like that. I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like. So, I got this uh, multimeter here from Amazon. It was like thirty dollars or something. But anyway, uh, it came with all these different kinds of wires. It came with this. This here is uh, a temperature sensor. So you can plug this in to your multimeter and uh, fish this down the fill tube and get a pretty accurate reading of what's down in there in the pan. But I know not all of you have that kind of a tool, so I decided to actually fish that wire down in there just because I'm, I'm curious to match it up against this. Underneath, this thing shows about 95 degrees. This thing actually dips down into the actual oil itself. And this thing's reading about 97 degrees. So there is actually a very slight difference, not by a ton, but a little bit. So I think maybe in the future I'll probably use my multimeter to put what the oil temperature is. But I know not all of you are going to have that tool, so this is still pretty close. It's only about three degrees off. So now that it's up to temperature and it's still running, we're gonna climb under there and pull the check bolt and see how much oil comes out. And remember, it only has three and a half quarts in it. So I'm curious to know, will anything come up? Nope, nothing. So there's not enough oil in there. All right, well, I'm really glad I actually went through that. I thought there'd be a little something coming out, but there really wasn't anything. So we're gonna put in another half a quart to make it a full four quarts of oil total. You see here that it's about half, so I'm gonna go down underneath. All right, let's do this again. There you go. You only want about a drizzle left. All right, so that's about it. That's a very small drizzle there. So that's where we're gonna stop the flow. Put that check bolt back in there. Tighten it down. That's all you need. 
So in conclusion of this video, the four most asked questions on the channel, one being a copper ring, do I change it? No, I don't, not unless it's damaged. Two, what kind of fluid do I use? I use Valvoline. This Valvoline oil that I use currently is NS2 and NS3 compatible. You can look this up on their website. Three, transmission filter. Is there a transmission filter? Yes, there is. However, it requires that you drop the transmission pan in order to access it. If you guys would like to see a future video on that, leave me a comment down below. And four, dipstick. There are no dipsticks on these transmissions. You have to buy them aftermarket. So what I'm gonna do is put a link in the description below that you can go to later if you so choose to buy aftermarket dipstick. So there you have it guys. If you're perhaps doing this for the first time, my hope is that this video was a good representation of what you should do step by step. And once again, please do your own homework. It will benefit you in the end as it has benefited myself. If this video was a help to you, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If there's something I can do to improve, please let me know down in the comments and we'll see you guys next time.